Hey there. Hello, hello. We are finishing a tiered tray today. So this is a the bloom tier tray that was recently just um, added to the website. So it was, I think, not this last Thursday, Thursday before. So it's been a week or two. Um, but I thought I'd come on here and show you how easy it is to finish this. We're going to keep it simple and do a quick, quick little craft this Saturday morning. So these are the pieces that you get in the kit. So let me get them off this tray so they're a little easier to see. Uh, as you join, say hi. Let me know what you're doing today, where you're watching from. Let's see if I can get my comments up. Hello, hello. My comments are here. Hi, Cara. There we go. Okay. Comments, comments. Um, so as <clears throat> as I get all my uh comments up here, let me um tell you what this is. So as I go live, whenever that happens to be, to do a finish tutorial with you on one of our kits, we will have a coupon code of the day, which will allow you to get the kit that I'm finishing for 20% off. So the link for the shop is in the bio. Go find the Bloom tier tray and use this coupon code, Bloom TT 20 and uh, it can be lowercase or uppercase, case does not matter, um, and you'll get 20% off the kit today. So it's the coupon of the day, coupon code of the day. And I just want to see here. Okay. So you've got um, this piece here. This is a just a little mini round sign. It's got three separate flower parts on top um, and then the greenery and then fresh flower market are all individual pieces. Um, and it is scored to create a, a kind of a shiplap background. So you see the lines going across there. And then also it's scored with the letter placement. So as you uh, finish painting it and put your pieces on, you can easily uh, put those in the correct spot and they're all centered and ready to go. Easy. Um, and then the second piece that you get is a uh, layered bloom word. So you've got your back and your front there. And then you've got this little house piece that says Love's grow, Love Grows Here. And again, the letters are scored in the back for you to have easy placement. And then you have a cute little tag. It has the little washer here. It says Hello Spring and has a flower here. Again, they're all scored for you. And then a flower banner which comes with five pieces, five different flowers. It's got the holes at the top here. So there's five there and then a flower charm. So you can add um, beads to this, which we'll do today, or a um, just a braided uh, rope with a tassel on the end. Um, whatever you have, this is kind of just a charm that you can attach. You could even um, you know, add a ribbon here and attach it to the tag. So whatever you wanna do there, that's kind of whatever you have. Hello, Sarah Lynn, how are you? Let's see if I can see comments. 
Okay, so the color scheme that I'm going to go with, I'm going to keep it pretty neutral. I'm going to use a white, a black, and I always just paint my tear trays, uh, door hangers, all, all of it with just uh, acrylic craft paint. Um, it's a combination of wherever I pick it up. So Apple Barrels from Walmart, the Anita's is from Hobby Lobby. Um, so whatever I find as I'm shopping is what I grab. Um, I also have a granite gray, so I'm going to use that. And then I've got three different greens. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try and keep it to a black and white theme with some greens in there. Um, and then that way you can, um, or I can decorate this with any color flowers that you might have on hand. So I'm keeping it pretty neutral. Um, but I have some different mossy uh, light greens here. So this one is uh, Wedgwood. They're all very similar. This one's more of a, well, we'll have to open it up. I hate looking at the bottle because it always is a little different. But anyways, uh, Mossy Meadow with from Folk Art and then uh, Desert Cactus from Deco Art. So those are the greens that I might be using. We'll see which one looks best as I, as I work. Good morning, Lori. Uh, so let me grab my masking tape and I'm going to start by just taping down all my small pieces. Uh, and making sure I don't lose them. And it also makes it easy to paint them. So I'm going to start with my little green right here. I might have to bring in a pink or something for the flowers. I don't know if I just want to have black and white flowers. I always end up changing my mind as I go. And I just, as things progress, things, new ideas come as you're painting and kind of get inspired. I always sit down with the plan, but always end up changing it just a little. So if you're just joining, um, our coupon code of the day is BloomTT20, and that gives you 20% off the kit that I am finishing today. So that's an all-day coupon code for the Bloom Tiered Tray Kit. And remember, Mother's Day is just right around the corner. If you have a crafty mom, a gift basket of crafty items would be amazing, or grab a couple kits and schedule a crafting time with her. One of the best memories I have is crafting with my mom and grandma. Grandma's actually, both my uh, grandmas were crafty. Okay. All my bits are taped down, so I'm not going to lose those. And we're going to start just with the base of all of these other parts here. Let me kind of make room. I've got a cluster going on here. All right, let's start with this one. I'm going to do a stripe of uh, black and white on this one. And with the stripes already here, it's going to be super easy to create those stripes. I'm going to get black and white, and then I'm also going to get my gray out. So I know I'm going to add a little gray in there. Okay, so as I'm going, and if you're on, I need a color for my flowers. I really can't just do black and white and green. I didn't think that through very well. So should I do a pink, a light pink, a teal, purple, orange? What color would you paint your flowers? Okay, 
Okay. Um, you can tape this off if you want to get a more precise, but I'm not going to. I've just got a large flat brush, and I'm going to start with my black here. And just run the brush right up along that line. And because the laser scores pretty much burns the wood, that's what a score mark is, just a really thin burn mark, it is a little bit engraved into the wood. So that allows you to paint right over the item and still see where those letter placements are going to be. You'll still be able to see a the ghost of those items, I guess, through the paint. Was anyone traveling for the weekend? Are they on the road? Visiting family somewhere? We were supposed to travel, um, but it just didn't turn out that way for us. We like to well, we started it a couple of years ago, traveling to Billings with our camper and having Easter weekend be our first camping trip of the season. Um, and it's not very, you know, the weather's not always the best. It, usually it's kind of rainy and, and whatnot, but it just gets, lets us get away and play games in the camper, hang out, do a little shopping. Uh, but it didn't happen this weekend for us, so I was super sad about that, but that's okay. Oh, lavender and, or a lilac color is, yes, I love that idea, Sarah Lynn. I'll get them both out and we'll see how it looks. Maybe I'll do a combo of both colors. Since I have so many flowers, a few pink and a few lavender. With that mossy green, I think will look great. I always forget about purple. Just not a color I think about when I'm Decorating or painting, I guess. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can look in my camera here and see. But you can still see, again, where those letters are going to need to be placed through the paint. So those scored markings are really great and make it super easy to paint these pieces. So instead of traveling, um, I pulled out my to-do list for this weekend. Yesterday we put up some shelves in our storage room downstairs because it was a disaster boxes and tubs on top of each other and it was so hard to find stuff so we decided well I decided I should say I don't know if my husband would agree that it was a good idea but I pulled everything out of the storage room because it was driving me nuts and I wanted to go through all of my boxes anyways. 
It's amazing what you collect. It's just amazing. And then you collect it and put it somewhere and forget about it. Like there was stuff down there. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot I had that. So anyways, we pulled it all out and I did. I pulled it all out into the rec room, which is under construction as well. And then painted the storage room and there was no really good light down there. So I painted the storage room a light um, color, just a scrap. Uh, gallon of paint I had and um all right black or white let's see I think I'm gonna go black on this one and I'll go white on this one and then maybe we'll do something maybe stripes going that way on that one um so I painted the whole room I did that last weekend though and then we put proper light in there. And so yesterday we put up some shelves to stack tubs with and boxes and things. And it is already looking so much better. Kind of a multi-step process though. We still need more shelves but that's gonna have to wait till later. Okay, white, and then we'll go black on this one. So today's task is to hopefully get our TV mounted. We have been wanting to mount our TV on our fireplace, above our fireplace, for about a year now. And it's a stone fireplace, so it's not quite an easy task. It's kind of... Something you really have to plan out to try and find the studs and and then I was thinking, well, maybe we should try and hide the cords behind and watched a bunch of YouTube videos on other people mounting their TV on a fireplace and in the end decided that I wasn't going to dismantle a section of the fireplace because it's stone and I'm just going to run my cords up and along the ceiling and I picked up some cord cover, you know, the, the rail um, that you can put your cord in and you cover it with, you know, it just looks like a little square piece. So that's what we're going to go with. And if that bothers me that much, we will look at hiding cords later. All right, let me grab a lavender. and a pink. So I think these two with one of the greens for the flowers. All right, so this one's done. I'm gonna put that off to the side. This one's gonna need a second coat. This one's done, so we'll move that to the side and I'm thinking I'm going to do stripes going up and down on this one. So I am going to use my tape for that. Well, I think we can do it without. Let's try it. If all else fails, it will just get painted black. So we'll start with black stripes. So let's see. I want them to run as horizontal as I can. I'm just going to try and use the width of my brush and just pull it as straight as I can.
This is a different type of style than I'm used to painting. I tend to default to a rustic farmhouse um, chippy wood style. All right, I think it'd be easier for me to pull my paintbrush this way. Let's turn it. So to get the white stripe, stripe the size that I want it, I just lay my brush. I'm not um, touching my item, but I put it on one side of the black stripe, and then I flip it and just touch um, where this corner is going to. Um, I just tap it there, and that's about the width that my white stripe is going to be, and then I use this that little point as my guide for this stripe. And this is going to get covered up with the word bloom. So if it's not perfect, it's gonna be okay. Okay, turned out okay. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back with the white. Um, but let's grab our green and paint all of our green elements to start with. And I'll put that off to the side because I'll need a second coat on that. So let's just, I'm gonna put, open these up and kind of look at them. Let's see which one. Because they're all always a little different when they come out the bottle. Um, I think I'm going to go with this mossy green. The slip goes on this one. Alright, let me grab a makeup sponge to paint my pieces with. Makeup sponges are the best for these smaller pieces. Okay. So I'm going to bring out this row of letters is for this sign. So I think I'm going to obviously do my greenery in green and then mark it in green and then maybe fresh flowers in one of the um, flower colors or the gray. So I'm going to load my makeup sponge up and get started here and just tap tapping on the top of each of these little pieces. Makeup sponge is great for finishing little tiny elements. So it helps just to paint just the tops of them. Using a brush can be a bit of a hassle because um, as you're pushing and pulling paint, you tend to pull it or push it off the edge and then the edges become 
it can get uh, full of paint and have globs of paint here and there and, and look a little messy. So we use the makeup sponge, allows us just to paint the tops. Okay, we've got that one done. Um, I'm gonna do bloom in green, which is gonna go on the stripe there. Um, we are also getting ready for our first craft show since uh, pre-COVID, and we are pretty excited about that. So if you're local to us and you're watching, mark your calendars for Saturday the 30th. We will be at the event center from 9 to 3. And it's, um, we're gonna just have finished product at the event center. Um, finished signs, mostly, and a few smaller items. We were gonna do kits, but we figured you can just order those online and this allows us to give you our, uh, um, do finish signs, which we don't hardly do anymore. And I think we're gonna have a few graduation items. So if you're looking for graduation gifts, Mother's Day gifts, I'm not sure how many vendors are going to be there quite yet. I haven't heard the count, but I think there's quite a few. So I shot some handmade items and unique things. All right, there is our green. And now I'm gonna switch back to white. And the Love Grows here is gonna be on the black house. So I'm gonna do all that in white. Um, we have to do the sh stripes here. And I think that's it for white. I might do the centers white, or I might do them green maybe. So let's start with white, using a makeup sponge again. Now white typically requires a couple different coats, two to three at least. And you might be tempted to really load up your brush and put a bunch of paint down to eliminate the step. But because these letters are so small, having too much paint on your makeup sponge or brush or whatever it is you're using will uh, create more of a messy finish. And like I said, possibly push paint off the edge you're getting paint in all those little uh, openings. And when you're using a light coat, it dries super fast. Acrylic is fast drying. So I typically do a base coat on everything and then I'll come back and put a second coat on as needed. So this will need a second coat, so we'll come back to that. And I'm going to paint the center of all my flowers white. 
And I'm just going to messily put paint down using my makeup sponge. I'm just going to tap right on top there and then I'll come in with color. Actually, I'll just do the whole thing white and that will help the pink and purple really stand out. So if you're painting your centers something else, you absolutely don't have to paint the whole thing white. But since I have it here, this will act like a primer or a base coat. So when I go to paint my color, I'll only need one in theory. We'll see how it goes. I say that and I'll probably jinx myself and need two or three. Well, maybe two. Hopefully not three. And let's tape these little flowers down. I forgot they're like a little puzzle piece. The little flowers that go on the round sign um, are all separate. So they're kind of tiny and hard to hold. We'll just tape those down real quick. And you know, you could do just white and black and green, I guess. You could have white flowers. There's white daisies. With a green center or a black center. So now I'm just coming in and adding a little second coat to my center areas. Not the entire flower, I just want to really have those centers pop. And because it's white, it does need a second coat there. Okay, great. Let's see. Let me grab my brush and we'll get our white stripes on the bloom background here. And we'll also put a second coat on the tag. So if you're just joining us, um, we do have a coupon code of the day for 20% off the kit that I'm painting right now. And it is Bloom TT for Tear Tray, 20% off, 20. So let me rephrase that. I was trying to explain it as I was telling you the coupon code and that does not work, right? Bloom TT 20 is the coupon code and that works for the Bloom Tear Tray for today only. You get 20% off. Talking and painting at the same time is not always easy. especially stripes when you're really trying to concentrate on hitting your stripes just right. Okay, there's that. Um, before I paint the tag, I am going to sand it just a little bit. Sometimes wood, when we paint it, gets a little bit rough, and that's just the fibers of the wood start to stick up when they get wet. Um, and some pieces are fine, some pieces, even within the same cut, 
it happens too. So it's just a natural thing that wood does. So if you're ever painting a wood kit from us and you notice that a piece is rough feeling after you paint it, um, it just needs those, it just means that those fibers have started to stick up. And you want to take just a light set or a fine sanding block and knock them down. So I'm just going to come in and this tag got a little rough. So I'm going to knock those fibers down. I'm going to wipe the dust away and we can put our second coat on. Okay. We'll come in with our second coat. I might paint this gray though. We might do a gray on this. We'll see. I also like to try and keep my edges really clean and leave them the dark color that the laser creates that kind of a burnt edge. It's not completely black, but it's a dark brown. Um, so as I paint my pieces, I tend to start my brush strokes in the middle and pull out towards the end or edge. And that way that helps keep my paint from pooling on the edge um, or getting pulled on the edge. go. There's that. And what else do we've got? So our bloom will need a second coat. Let me see if that's dry. Not quite. Um, let's put a second coat on our letters here. Those are dry. And I've got my makeup sponge and some black. That's awesome. No problem though. Just clean it off and keep going. Tap a little bit more onto my centers here. I'm half thinking of just doing white flowers, guys. I don't know. I mean, why not? Why not? Let's just see how it's going to go. I'm going to just paint all my flowers white. And I might come in with a gray center or a green center. And if it's too, too much, I can always go over the top with them. I'm going to go back to my original plan. White, green, grays, maybe a gray, and black. I can use the gray to create some shadows on my white flowers. I 
think one of the hardest parts for me when painting pieces like this is sometimes visualizing the colors. Like I know the colors I want to use, but I seem to second guess myself or doubt myself and what I want to do. So I tend to kind of backpedal and decide to do something else. And you can always change it as you do it. I mean, there's there's no wrong in that either, but trusting that I want to do a certain color can be hard sometimes. Trusting my gut, I guess, I don't know. But we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go all white flowers. And we'll do some shading. We'll put green on the centers. And daisies are my favorite flower anyway, so there we go. All right, one last thing here. Let's put a second coat on our stripes, and then we can start gluing some pieces together. And then we will add some shadows and some shading to our flowers. Okay, there's that. Oh, and I've got my flush, fresh flowers there. Um, I'm gonna put, there's just a couple areas on my stripes on my round sign that I wanna add a little white to. Some clean it up a little bit. All right, let's grab a small brush, a round brush, and I'm gonna grab some gray and actually I'm gonna do my green centers first. Let me wash that gray out. I'm gonna get that green. And I kind of got messy here, so I'm going to clean up my bloom letter. Drop some white on it. have a black kind of wrought iron metal tiered tray that I think this is going to look fantastic on. And then I have a couple tea towels that have the, they're white with um, some gray and black um, 
stripes on it, like ticking stripes. And I wanted to be able to paint some beads with you guys, but I don't know if I'll have time. We'll see. I might have to do a second video on that. All right, we just got these little flowers here left for the centers. And I have this little washer here. I'm going to paint that green while I have it on my brush. I forgot about this little guy. And this flower here, I originally painted white, but it goes on my white tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it green as well. Or paint it just green because um, that way it will stand off my tape a little bit. Okay. There's that. Let's see. That's done. That's done. We still have the fresh flowers, which I will do in gray. And we have some shading to do. So let's do the shading and then I'll do those letters. So I'm going to take some white or the gray here on my brush. And I have a little bit of water in my brush. Um, I didn't uh, press out the water and I am just using that water and a little bit of this gray to create a watered down gray with just a small amount of pigment in it so I get a kind of like a watercolor effect. So I'm going to take this and actually kind of press out the excess water. Let me see where we're at here. And I'm going to take it and just bring in some color on the edges of my flowers here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. It's pretty dark. Try and blend that in. You know, I've got too much gray on my brush. I'm going to grab my spray bottle and just spritz an area so I can get a little bit more water down. And soften up that color a little bit as I place it. So this is very subtle. You can hardly see it. So it's just got this really light, light gray. Shadow happening. And it just kind of helps give your piece a little dimension. And you can do this with whatever color 
um, you're using by just adding maybe a little white to it or um, a little bit black, a little black or um, brown can be used to create a darker color or if you just had a darker shade in your bottle. And then just add a little bit of water to it. Just a small amount of paint. And I'm gonna create a wash on your item and it's, it's kind of helps with that shadow, I'm giving it some dimension. I'm going to bring in a couple lines kind of in the center, coming from the center or in the center of the petal, I should say, as well. And if you get too much, you can always just add a little. Um, of your original color back on top of it and soften it up a little bit. Trying to do them all a little different. Going on different sides of the petal. And sometimes just going down the center and not even going on the outside. Kind of mixing it up between each of the flowers. Okay. And then I'm going to grab some white and just bring some highlights into the center. Just a quick little, let's see, I need more white. Can't get enough on my brush here. Quick little half circles or parentheses inside there. And then on this flower here, we'll just bring some highlights in as well with the white. Bring a little highlight on the washer there. I'm going to bring some white in on these leaves. And then I'm going to grab, I'm actually just going to go green on the fresh flower. I was going to go gray, but I already have green on a makeup sponge, so we'll just go with that. Okay, I think we are ready to um, start assembling the tear tray. So I'm going to use, I'm going to start with this uh, house. And it has the love grows here words, so we'll bring that in. And I'm going to use a super glue called Stick Fast for this. You can use really any glue um, that you want to super glue, wood glue, Elmer's glue, tacky glue. And I'm just barely putting a very small drop on all the pieces. Kind of just around the main points or the 
corners and then I'll line it up with the score marks and place it in. There we go. And when you're taping your pieces down, you want to make sure if you're doing that method, you want to make sure you're using a low tack tape, such as masking tape or washi tape. Um, I've tried duct tape, but it tends to rip out the wood in the back. So I don't like to use it. And then even with the um, masking tape, you want to carefully take your pieces off. I typically start at one side and just kind of roll it off um, because even the masking tape can damage your wood pieces if they're tiny like this. You just want to do have a little extra care when taking your pieces off. The other thing that sometimes happens as I'm placing my pieces is I get a little shaky and getting it just in the right spot can be um, cumbersome and it depends on my day, I guess, but you can use something that has um, just some sharp corner and I'll just kind of tap it along until I find the place where I want it. So that can be helpful. Instead of trying to get your finger in there, um, just grabbing something, even a pencil or something. Well, you, you don't want to mark it up, but um, I've used a daughter to help me place my items. Or you can also get a pair of tweezers to help place them. So placing those tiny pieces can be a challenge. Some days I'm just a little more shaky than others. I love this white and black though. I think that's turning out super cute. I love the contrast it gives on this little house sign. Okay, last piece here. There we go, there's our first piece finished. I'm gonna get our brush flowers out and I'm going to start by placing the flowers. Um, the flowers are not scored in but with the top piece here um, you can kind of get an idea of where there's a, where they're going to go. So what I'm going to do is put them together. If I can remember the, there we go. So um, You'll be able to get them together on your flat round here and then just rotate them until you find the petals that match with those uh, pieces that are sticking out of the round. So it's gonna look like that. Your bigger flower will be on the bottom and then your two on the top there. So I'm gonna lift up one of my flowers and Slide that back in. 
actually I'll just put this align it with my top here first and then I'll put my other two flowers around it kind of like a fun little puzzle okay that is not right let me put this one in first I had rotated my piece, guys, so know where you're going. I was able to pop that off fairly quickly before my glue completely set. The downside of using super glue is that it dries fast and you don't have very much wiggle room in how much you can adjust things. Kind of set and done, but we got it. But the upside to it is it dries fast and you're ready to go a little quicker there. All right, so I've got my greenery here. A little dab of glue on just the leaves there. Place it on those score marks. You don't need a lot of glue for these little pieces. They're not going to go anywhere if you get the majority of the pieces glued down. Go light. I'm glad I added the gray to the flowers to help offset that um, white stripe there. Okay, let's get our letters on this one. So let me know in the comments if you've done a little tear tray kit from us. Or if you decorate with tear trays. I have to be honest, when they first came out, I was a little skeptical. And I was like, I don't know, that seems kind of silly. But... I found that it makes for an easy way to do just a quick decor change, kind of a refresh, especially if you're short on space. Like I don't have a lot of space to hang seasonal decor or um, shelf space either. So the tier trays make it pretty easy to do some quick seasonal decor uh, decorating with a sh small amount of space. Or if you don't have space for a tiered tray, these pieces um, look great on a shelf, just kind of scattered about too. This is stacked on books, leaned against something. Okay, what do you think? These kind of remind, the flowers remind me of kind of magnolia flowers.
All right, let's do the blue. I wanted to do some decorating for the um, Easter on my table and put together a, a centerpiece, but I'm right in the middle of prepping for the bazaar. So my table is my workspace right now. So I might clear it off and do something real quick, but we'll see. I'm not sure about that black stripe or the stripes in the background. I'm gonna see if I can't pop this off real quick and just paint it a solid color. Maybe not, maybe I'm stuck with it, guys. Let's see how easy I can get this off. No, it is what it is, I guess. I waited too long to decide. I waited. Touch this up now. It's just kind of hard to read the bloom. But I might try and do something with it. We'll see. We might come back to that one. Okay, Tig, last thing. And let's see if I have, I had a gray ribbon, Let's see if I can find a green real quick. I have just a smudge of green. This might be a little too bright yet. One of my goals this summer, guys, is to organize my ribbon. Okay, I don't have a green that I want to use here. That's okay. So I've been thinking about the craft on Thursday. Um, and what I want to do there, I'm thinking we might do some maybe watercolored uh, Mother's Day cards or something. Or May Day cards. Something with some watercolor. I did the watercolor technique on um, the kit I put together, when was it, Thursday night? So I did the, the um, If Mothers Were Flowers bunting kit and we did watercolor on there so now um, I want to do more watercolor. That's typically how it goes. You kind of put something aside for a while and then you get back into it and you're like, oh yeah, this was really fun. Let's just keep going with it. Thanks, Sarah Lynn. Yeah, I think if they would have just been white, I don't think it would have worked, but they do, they just look like little magnolia flowers to me. If they would have had a yellow center, I probably would have said they look like daisies, but.
Okay, there we go. There's our little tag. Just the white and the green, something a little different than what we have so far. So we have the, this is gonna be a little banner. So you got your five piece banner here. This one with one hole is a charm. And I'll probably pop on maybe sometime later today or sometime this weekend and do a beaded garland to go with this. I'm thinking black and white, but then you have, I think this all turned out super cute. And I am going to grab a brush and just go with black here. And the reason I'm going with black is because my edges of my bloom um, cut out are a dark color. So I can successfully, without too much trouble, just come in and paint my white black. So it just is too much for the little letters and it's getting lost in what's happening here. So I'm using a flat brush and just carefully painting along those edges. And if I get a little too much on the top, I can touch that up as well. But let's just go black here. I didn't act quick enough when I wanted to change it out and pull it off. The glue had set up already. So learn from my mistakes, lay out your pieces before gluing them, and just double check that you like everything. So you have the opportunity to change it up if you want. I think that's going to work better. If this had been any other color, guys, I would not be doing this. But again, because the edges of the bloom are that dark brown, I know I can get away with this modification. And I've got a little bit on the top here, but I'll touch that up here in just a second. So I think that's going to look a little better. It's a little dark, but it will pop off the tiered tray. I'll place it against a white vase. All right, let's get down. I'm going to switch to my liner brush for the inside of the O here. Just make sure all of these little corners in here are good. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to come back and just touch up my top. I've got a little bit of black happening on the top, and we're going to be good to go. A quick little change. Gently tapping the tops, covering up the little bits of black that I got on there. Touched a couple areas here. And voila. I like that a lot better. It really um, helps it pop if it's a solid color. So, again, learn from my mistakes. Make sure that as you are um, 
getting ready to glue, place your items on there and really look at them before you finalize it. So you know for sure that's what you want to do. The great thing about paint is you can, or painted projects, you can always change it, right? You can always decide you want something a little different. You want to change the colors. Um, and even in this case, I was able to make a quick change, but think about it before you glue it down. So anyways, there's that. Um, and like I said, I'll come back and do a garland and a tassel for the little charm here. But I think this set turned out super cute. Um, I'm glad I just decided to go with the black and white and see how it turned out. And I think it turned out great. So let me know what you think. Um, and don't forget that you can get 20% off the tier tray today uh, for with the coupon code BloomTT20. And that is in the description um, on Facebook. There's also a link. And if you're on TikTok, you can head over to the shop. The link is in the bio. So thanks for hanging out with me this morning. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and weekend. Happy Easter if I don't talk to you again. And we will chat with you later. Bye.